Jason's family has fled to Seattle because his father has pissed off JCVD. Now, Jason is the new karate kid in town and he's getting the Daniel LaRusso treatment. What is he to do? Well, get trained by the ghost of Bruce Lee, of course. Wax on a smile and sand all probability away in No Retreat, No Surrender. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome to the second Spicy Boy Rewind Reviews, where we go back and look at a cult classic film. That's right, we're going back into my childhood here, and today we are reviewing No Retreat, No Surrender. Directed by Corey Ewan, who was, also came up with the story. <laughs> came up with the story. He watched Karate Kid. He's both an actor and director who's been in the industry all the way since 1965. Western audiences might know his work from directing the first Transporter movie and DOA, Dead or Alive. The film was released in the US in 1986, two whole years after The Karate Kid. But they thought, fuck this Miyagi shit, we'll get the ghost of one of the greatest martial artist legends of all time to train our protagonist. But, I'm getting ahead of myself. Jason is the oldest looking teenager in Seattle, and for an 80s movie, that's saying something. His father is getting bullied by the local mafia, and they use the muscles from Brussels to muscle him out of his karate dojo. Because if there's anything that the mob really want, it's little strip mall karate dojos. Trust me, there's an FBI file on it. So he packs up his whole family and they head to Seattle where there is no crime. Jason arrives in Seattle and realises that he's too early for the grunge movement, so he befriends Breakin' 2 Electric Boogaloo. Him and his new friend MJ, I'm sorry, RJ, try and befriend the local kids, but Jabba the Hutt is having none of it. He tells the local Cobra Kai team that Jason is a real bully and full of himself, thinking he's a big karate champion, so they show him no mercy. Jason does try to fight back from all the taunts and the bullying, and even decides to start dating Johnny Lawrence's ex-girlfriend, which can only go well. <laughs> the film's not even trying to hide it, is it? Of course, Jason doesn't have the skills to get the kills, and his dad is, yep, still a pussy. So uh, when all hope is lost, he gets a visit from the ghost of Bruce Lee. I'm not fucking kidding. As a kid, I thought they did a pretty decent job with casting Bruce Lee in this film. I mean, the guy doesn't really look a lot like Bruce Lee, but I think his voice and mannerisms are pretty good. Is it bad taste? Fuck yes it is! But it's the 80s. Also, is it just me, or does Kurt McKinney, who plays Jason here, look a little bit like uh, Brandon Lee? That's weird. But for some reason, the mob come to Seattle to try and get another local dojo from the big karate championship of the town, because one dojo is never enough. So they unleash Ivan Drago, I mean, Ivan Krasinski, John claude Van Damme on their asses. He takes on all the best of the best and he sweeps all the legs. Is somebody going to stop him? We need a hero! Fuck yeah, they do, and they get Jason because he's been trained by the best. I'd be lying if I said this film wasn't all kinds of exploitation. <laughs> it heavily rips off Karate Kid for one. And it uses the ghost of a deceased legend. I don't know if I got the permission for that. I guess they had to. And the acting is fucking horrendous. But goddamn, is it fun. Also in the climax, instead of the crane kick, uh, we get like a backflip kick or whatnot because Jason didn't get his leg broken like a pussy, Daniel. He ain't going home in a body bag. Good taste is. We also get an 80s montage and an 80s montage song to accompany it called uh, Hold On To The Vision by Frank Harris. I mean, it's no Eye of the Tiger, but it's more than the film deserves. This movie also spawned two sequels that had nothing to do with the original. Like, if this one is heavily inspired by The Karate Kid, well then the second two go full-blown Delta Force. It's so cheesy, it's so bad, it's good. Definitely get a group of friends together with a couple of bevvies, because you'll have a bloody good time. The budget for this film was $400,000, and it grossed about $4.5 million, so well done. It's blatant foreign markets trying to cash in on American cinema and cliches, which happened a lot in the 80s, and I fucking love it. I mean, Samurai Cop, anyone? It's shit, but it's good shit. It's cheesy, it's bad taste, but fuck, I love it! My friend showed me this film in primary school, telling me that it was a better Karate Kid because it had Bruce Lee in it. <laughs> Does it? Anyway, that's my review and recommendation for No Retreat, No Surrender. If you haven't seen it, Please watch it, it's craptastic, it's so much fun. Yeah, you'll have a bloody good time. Guys, uh, write down below what uh, other Karate Kid ripoff do you know of and, and enjoy? Because if I haven't seen it, bloody hell, I'll watch it. 
And of course, if you've made it this far into the episode, please give us a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going. And I just love movies, and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because we give out episodes weekly. And we'll see you here next week for the next review. And until then, stay spooky, kids.